better. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I've got a very useful video about a technique I use quite a lot in PyRevit, but is also applicable in Dynamo as well. And in this case, that is using Python libraries. So using external files with Python functions in them in order to avoid having to write the same code in multiple places. So today I'll be using Autodesk Revit 2020 and Dynamo and also PyRevit Notepad++ and the Iron Python programming language. Um, but it's a quick video today, but if you haven't already seen some of my videos on PyRevit, you may want to check them out, as well as my videos on Python in my Python 101 playlist, as I will be uh, skipping over a lot of ground that I cover in those videos. So today I'll firstly show you how you can work with the library in a PyRevit extension, as well as utilize functions from within that library. We'll also jump into Dynamo and quickly look at appending to the system path as an alternative method um, that's a little bit more standardly applicable in programs that utilize the Python programming language. So in this case, I'm just gonna prepare a little file off to the side. There we go, so you can't see that, but effectively I'm just getting ready. Um, but without further ado, um, we'll jump straight in. In this case, if you need to slow me down, let me know. Um, and in this case, you can just put my speed down to 0.5 or 0.75 in the playback setting. So actually don't let me know. Uh, but in this case, that should hopefully make me a little bit easier to follow. Um, so I'm just gonna jump straight into Revit. Um, I'm just working with an empty file, so nothing really special happening here. Uh, but I do already have um, a extension set up. Um, and within that extension, there's a place where you can actually place um, your custom libraries that you can create. So under the extension folder, where usually we would have kept our hooks and our tabs, in this case, we can also create a folder called LIB. And Pyrovit is programmed to know that every single Python library within this directory um, should be available uh, to call upon when needed. So by default, we can actually utilize .py files and we can draw in functions from within them to our other scripts. And this will effectively save us having to use the same functions in, in the same place. So what I might do in this case is just set up a dummy tool. And I'm just gonna use this to test my library. So I'm just gonna say test.pushbutton. In this case, I'm going to actually just add it. And I'm just gonna take another one of my tools and borrow the pieces from it. Make the bundle, call it test, take out the context. Um, I'll just say that the context is testing only. Um, I'll get rid of the icon, it doesn't need one. And in this case, I'll just call this test underscore script. And by default, um, let's just say that the script uh, does nothing for now. So we'll come back to that later. Um, but what I'll do now in PyRevit is just reload my toolbar and we should now gain in that case this little test button that we can send things to and we can run dynamically in PyRevit. So now that we've done this, we can actually start building a custom library instead. So in, uh, in my thing, there we go, that's my test button, which currently does nothing. So what I'm gonna work with now instead is back at the extension level, I'm gonna go into my LIB or library folder and I'm now gonna be using a little Python file I've created called Utility Strings. And these are really just tools you could use to work with strings. Um, now, a very common issue when you're dealing with Revit is some categories in Revit are actually illegal. You cannot use them when renaming um, certain objects. For example, if I try to name a floor plan and I try to add, say, the asterisk character to it, I believe it's okay in some cases, but I believe in Windows it might be illegal. But there are some, there we go. So here's our little magic list of characters we can't use in Revit. I believe I should be able to copy these to Notepad as well. There we go. So we now have a list of all the characters we shouldn't be using uh, in Revit. So I'm gonna just close out of this. And now we can use this little list of characters in a custom library to actually go and check strings before we use them uh, using our custom library. So I'm gonna go into that uh, library file, which is currently the string utilities.py file. And there are certain ways you can construct these files, but generally I found in PyRevit you don't typically really have to do much besides just start writing functions. Um, so in this case, I'm just gonna go straight to adding my illegal character list. 
and there probably are better ways to work with um, libraries. I know people often will create classes in them and use the init uh, call, I believe it is. Uh, but I'm gonna just work really simple today. So what, all I'm gonna do is just put um, apostrophes around these and make them separate strings so that we can check if these strings are in use in a larger string elsewhere. And I'm just closing these all off. I believe one of these, uh, that might need an escape character. So in Python, by default, that character represents something special, um, which is used to do things like imply new lines and tabs, etc. Um, if you do a double, uh, I think, um, backslash, it implies a single backslash. So I'm just going to do that. But I think otherwise, we should now have a list of characters available. And there we go. So I think they're all surrounded with a comma. Yep, they look good. Uh, so at this point, we now have um, a list of characters we can check for. Now let's just firstly check if certain strings are legal uh, that we send to PyRevit. So I'm just gonna make a function um, called uh, check string legality for Revit. And I'm gonna use the def uh, statement to start writing a function. And I'll just say is legal uh, Revit to check if it's legal for Revit. I'm going to pass in one variable, in this case a string, and in my function, first of all, I'm going to say by default, let's assume that this string is legal. So I'm going to say check is true. And I'm going to go through character by character in the string to see if any of those characters are illegal, and if so, instead I'll set check to false before I return that from the function. So um, for those that might know um, from previous series, you can actually iterate over strings, which is pretty handy. So what I can do here is I'll say for um, character in string, I'll say if the character is in replacements, so in this case, the objects that we're trying to make sure aren't in the string, um, then in this case, and I might call this something different to replacements actually, I'll call this um, char illegal. So I'll say if the character is in the illegal characters, then in this case, we don't actually need to iterate any further. Uh, we can actually just say that check is false. And then we can use the break statement in this case, which implies that we can stop looping at this point. And now that we've stopped looping or we've finished looping, if they were all legal, we can return if that object was legal. Now let's actually go and implement this function from our library in our PyRevit tool. Remembering this is just sitting in a file that's available to all scripts in this extension. So I'm gonna say in this case, first of all, we're going to import utilities, and I'm gonna say from utility strings, import everything. So the, the asterisk being the wildcard or everything. And now I should have all those functions available. So let's say um, maybe there's a bunch of strings that we wanna put in a list, and I'll say test one, test two, and I'll say test in this case, and I'll pick an illegal character, maybe this one. And we can now say for string, uh, I'll just say s in string list, and we can call on our function, in this case uh, is legal for Revit. Um, we'll say in this case that um, check is equal to the check over our string, and then we'll print, in this case, if it was true. So this script should just work through those strings and tell us when one of them is illegal, if any. And we can see true, true, and now we can see that our legalized function has successfully actually picked up the fact that there is an illegal string here. Now we can go one step further than that, and we can also build libraries that could clean these strings as well. Um, so let's build a quick function that can actually scrub these illegal strings because we might wanna do a renaming exercise and still actually successfully complete that exercise. So all we have to do is just add another function. So I'll just say in this case, make a string Revit legal. And in this case, I'm gonna define a new function and I'll just say uh, make legal Revit. And I'm gonna say in this case, I'm passing in a string and I have an optional replacement character, which by default, is going to be an empty string. So if you imply it, remember that if you imply an object to a function, 
um, then it, it says by default that will be the value we use unless you provide the argument specifically. So in this case, what we want to do is begin with an empty string and check each character one at a time and see if those characters should be in the string. If they should, we can add them to the string and if not, we can add the replacement. So I'm going to say in this case, first of all, uh, new string is equal to an empty string. And I'm going to say for character in string. And I'll say if the character is in the illegal characters, then in this case, we're going to actually want to append the replacement character. So we're going to say new string. We're going to use the plus equals syntax to redeclare the variable with an additional piece added to it. Um, in this case, remembering you can add two strings together, um, just like you can add numbers, but in this case, it will concatenate those two together. So we're going to add, in this case, the replacement to that string. But we know if it's not in uh, that list of illegal characters, then we can permit it. So we can say otherwise, new string plus equal character. And finally, we can return the new string. And we should now be able to also access this function um, pretty much straight away as long as I've been saving those files. So instead, um, let's say in this case that we want to use our make legal Revit function. And I'll say instead, um, I'll call this legal. And I'm going to make Revit legal S and I am going to declare the replacement in this case as an X. And I'll print in this case instead the legal string. So now if I run this, I should see that I have access straight away to that function. And I can see now it's actually went and found that illegal character and cleaned it. Now, of course, I could just not specify that extra argument. I could just say that replacement is not specified. And then it will assume the default position, which is just not to replace it with anything to not add anything in its place. So we can see that we very quickly have been able to create a really handy little file um, that all of our tools in our extension can access. And instead of having to go and write these functions over and over again, we can instead save quite a lot of time by just accessing the, the Python library that contains them. So once you start really getting into PyRevit, it's a good idea to start recognizing things you might be doing a lot. For example, exporting Excel might be something you do quite a lot. And there's a pretty heavy function that I've built, for example, that can export Excel, but I'd rather not write it every time I need it. So instead I have a file for Excel utilities and there's all sorts of other ones as well, work sharing utilities, unit conversion utilities, all sorts. Now we can actually access these types of files in Dynamo as well. So if you're not really keen on using a custom package around your organization, you can also consider storing your Python code on a server or an accessible environment for the tools when they are run. So what I can do is go to Dynamo instead. And the method of accessing this is a little bit different. Um, in this case, I'll just make a new file and I'm gonna make a Python script. And I do have a little boilerplate in here. I'm gonna get rid of a majority of this boilerplate. And I'm just gonna keep this. So I'm just bringing in the common language runtime. I'm importing sys in this case, and that allows me to append paths to my Python path. So in this case, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is find the place that I'm keeping the py file that I want to append into the context of my Python script. So what I can do instead is use the append method to add this library that I've just created. And then from, um, from the actual name of the utility, I forget the name off the top of my head, utility strings, mm -hmm. we can import everything. And now we're able to use the exact same code again in the context of Dynamo. So if I take this and instead um, I'll say that I want to append to an empty list and send this out instead, what I'll do is I'll append the legal strings and then I'll say the output of my node is clean list. And we should successfully, hopefully, end up with the same outcome. And we can see in this case, we've managed to access the functions in that Python library. And we can use these across multiple Python blocks and scripts and context. 
Um, but I do specifically use this typically for PyRevit. I do prefer custom packages usually because they can be easier to deploy around an organization when you have the right setup. Um, but I definitely use these a lot in PyRevit because you are effectively able to deploy the library as part of the extension that you're running. So these all become available as context of the extension. So a really useful technique and hopefully one that people might find some really handy use, use cases for. So that's all for today, just a quick video, but a really useful one, hopefully. Um, you can find most of my tools and scripts over at my GitHub. And of course, if you do have any questions or requests, feel free to either drop a comment below or you can email me as well. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.